um, before I get started, our um, email newsletter. Don't feel like you have to um, include your email on it, but if you want to, just go ahead and do that. Um, my name is Kelsey, and um, I'm the executive director. Allison is our director of education. And as Mike was kind of mentioning, um, we were founded about three years ago, in 2015. Um, we both were uh, dance education and performance majors at the University of South Carolina. And we um, just had a love for dance education um, in the school system, but making it more than just that. We wanted to take it beyond just one school that we worked with um, as a full-time teacher. We wanted to go into multiple schools and work with a variety of different ages and abilities. And so uh, that's why we kind of started the Carolina Dance Collaborative. Um, and we've loved it every minute of the way. So today I'm going to just share with you how we've grown and developed as an organization and some of the new changes that we've created um, and then give you an idea about the programs that we have, um, if there are either children that you have that would like to be involved or um, patients of yours or anybody that you serve and how we can get them plugged in. So we're going to be going back and forth. So um, bear with us as we kind of jump around from person to person. Allison just um, gave you our impact report that we just recently put out so that you can kind of see um, how we work with a vast array of people and not just um, individual disabilities. So, without further ado, let's Disclaimer, also, um, you will be moving because we think experiential learning is the best kind of learning, <laughs> but only just a little bit in your seats <laughs> right there. That's why I went to YouTube and pulled up some music. Yes, because we came mostly prepared. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, Mike already told you a little bit about us, but we are a mobile dance outreach organization, which means that we bring dance directly to the people that we serve. We do not have a facility, and our whole purpose and mission is to have um, community outreach, but also community partnerships. Um, and so, con collaborating with organizations, like all of you guys do, um, and how you work with your own organizations, we want to collaborate with you guys in our community to bring dance directly to the people that we serve. And so our mission is to engage the Carolinas, not just the Greenville area, but um, we're hoping to expand beyond Greenville. We're kind of in the upstate now, but hoping to go further um, into the Carolinas with quality dance education through those community-driven collaborations. Um, another part of our mission is wanting to make dance accessible to all people. Um, we felt like Greenville didn't really have a way to make dance accessible to everybody before we started our programs. Um, and we didn't want it to just be for um, the person who could afford it or the person who looked the part or the person um, who was a certain age or gender or race um, with a certain financial value. We wanted to make it accessible to all people. And so that's one of our really big missions that we um, try to get across and something that we're really passionate about. All right, Ms. Allison. Mm -hmm. So why, why dance? That's one of the questions we always have. Um, I say that dance is one of the greatest means of communication um, because you're combining the physical aspect of your body and you're also pairing it with music as well. So you get a lot of things all in one short period of time. Um, it's really wonderful for body confidence and self-esteem and understanding what your body can specifically do and how you use your body and how that is unique to you. Um, like I said before, it is experiential learning. You get to take real concepts um, and put them into your body. No one really thinks about um, when you're feeling tired that your body is heavy. And that is the way that you portray yourself when you're tired. And the opposite of that is light, when you are more awake and more alive. And having that experience just in a dance class with a little bit of music and being able to explore that gives individuals a better understanding of what their body is doing um, and how it is presented to the world and how they're feeling in their body at certain times. Um, it's a great vehicle for self-expression, social emotional learning, getting interactions with other people and learning how they move and express themselves in their body. Um, also, it's just good for physical fitness, you know, just getting those joints moving, um, getting that heart rate up and doing something that's different and challenging. It's not just jumping over cones. It's trying to be on the beat of the music and trying to learn how to move through space with other people in a class setting. Um, and what's really important to us is that 
we don't believe that this is reserved for one group of people. This is for all people. People always ask us, so who do you serve? And our trademark line is 2 to 92. Actually, our oldest participant now has been 96. <laughs> um, so do it up. And literally, that is what we try to engage because you never stop dancing. Let's be real. You should never <laughs> stop dancing. And we, um, we do a lot of creative movement, which is why we can engage lots of different populations, but we also do specific styles of dance as well. So it's a vast array of what we teach and what we try and focus on just to give a well-rounded experience to all of our participants. So we don't work just with people with disabilities, as you can see on that wonderful impact report in front of you. Um, we work a lot with children and we're really trying to work to branch into that adult sector as well because there are a lot of adults that come to us and say I've always wanted to dance <laughs> and now I'm ready to and we're like all right let's do it and then there's those adults that have danced previously in the past um, and they want to get back into it in a non-threatening environment where they feel invited and included and not judged for um, their body and who they are and their ability so with that being said, we are going to ask you to move. Miss Kelsey, I will let you come over here. We always call ourselves Miss and Miss because that's what we do in the classroom. So we're good friends, but sometimes I refer to you as that. We're going to do just simple mirroring. Yes, we're going to ask you to find someone or three people. This can be done in a three. I promise it can. Um, and you're going to face the person in front of you. Again, that's social-emotional learning. I get to look you directly in the eyes and connect <laughs> with you. Yes. And you're going to imagine that there is a mirror in front of you. And all you're going to do is move. Yes? So if Kelsey is trying to be my mirror, she is looking at the parts of my body that I'm moving and trying to move them at the exact same time as me. <laughs> And it can be as simple as whatever you want to do. And she's even making the same faces that I am. That's not a requirement. Um, but it's giving you the ability to move in however you want to move. You can just go, ha, da, 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 da. Yes, however you would like to move. It could just be you moving your head. If you just had limited mobility and all you could do was move your eyes, that's something that you can still watch another person and do with them. So, I'll give you 10 seconds, ooh, that's a short period of time, just to turn to the person next to you or several people next to you, grab a group, put the mirror out in front of you. Oh, I love this, I love this. music and say, okay, transition, now leader two is the official leader. Yes? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, decide. Leader one, leader two. <laughs>
And all of these pictures are from our classes, lots of classes. So like I said before, we, uh, we do programs for all people. Um, we have our specific adaptive branch, but then we also have a children's branch, which is our YMCA program, and an after school, sometimes in school programming as well. We have an adult branch, and then we also do artists and residencies within schools, um, and that can be elementary through high school. And we run typically on the normal school schedule, so fall through spring, and then in the summertime, we have summer camps. And just like Mike said before, we make all of our summer camps inclusive, um, and we specifically try to give our teachers very good um, assistance and cues for their students and work with them um, to make sure everyone is included. Um, and that is one of our favorite things to do is bring them all in together during the summertime. Did I miss something? No, we just have flyers for those summer camps. And yes, oh, if you're interested in telling anybody about that, yes. there's about 20 of them to choose from. So. <coughs> different months throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> New news. It's one of our favorite things. So we started, like Mike said, as an LLC. Uh, Kelsey and I had this specific mission to try to reach everybody with dance and make it accessible. And one of the biggest barriers that we found within our first two years of working was um, there was a massive financial barrier and that our purpose was to provide access and reach as many people as possible, and we were not able to fulfill that part of our mission. So with that being said, we decided that we were going to completely dissolve the LLC part of it and start with the exact same name, just as a nonprofit. And we really kept everything exactly the same as it is. Obviously, we now have a board of directors, but we really, um, felt limited and therefore decided, hey, we have to fulfill our mission, mission, so we're going to kind of transition just a little bit to really allow ourselves and open our, our business up to um, a lot more funding opportunities. <laughs> so what this means now is that we're able to do essentially more than we have been able to do before. We are able to go and reach more people, dive into deeper funding resources, um, and really find how we can make um, dance accessible to all of those people that we desire to see. We also now get to do lots of great fundraisers. <laughs> um, grants are a wonderful, um, just a wonderful place for us to pour into um, different wonderful foundations and tell them our story and what we do and what we're passionate about. Um, and we have received lots of great feedback thus far um, and of course we obviously accept donations and we uh, have a specific uh, scholarship program and it initially started just as the YMCA scholarship program and then we had fundraisers through our YMCA uh, performances but now it is for everyone so for our after school branch for our adult branch for our adaptive branch and for that YMCA branch as well so being able to provide scholarships for just one class, for people to come for an entire year, is very, very important to us. Okay, so what does our adaptive program look like? We wanted to specifically give you an idea about what we do in our adaptive classes. Um, we have Rebecca here with the our <laughs> Recess YMCA program, which she's been able to kind of see. And Erica, you've been to some of our classes. Um, and so we always invite you guys to come and, you know, just see what they're all about if you're ever uh, interested in that. But we, we recognize um, individuals with disabilities and their natural abilities. We want to campaign their capability as an individual, and we want to challenge them and grow them uh, with what we know that they're capable of accomplishing. And so that's something that we are very passionate about. We want to challenge them, not just intellectually and you know, remembering movements and creating themselves, but also um, physically allowing them to be challenged. Uh, we have a lot of students who start with not being able to skip or um, not being able to balance for a very long period of time. And after staying with us and being with us for a few classes, we've seen a lot of physical growth. Uh, we've seen a lot of improvements with 
their stamina, with their balance, with their coordination, with their rhythm skills, um, and it's been really cool to watch that. But we also, like Allison was saying, wanted to give them a place for social interaction, not just with their peers, um, but maybe with their family members, which um, this is a picture, our adaptive Christmas flash mob, and as you can see, um, almost every child has a parent or a sister or a grandparent with them. Um, and it kind of gives them just another way to bond as a family. Uh, we had specifically um, a sweet little boy named Archie who had Down syndrome with us um, for the past two or three years. And his grandfather um, had cancer uh, last year. And so he said, you know what, I'm going to, um, I'm going to dance with Archie. That's going to be my time with Archie. Um, and so he participated in the flash mob with us. He was down on the floor making all these cool <laughs> shapes and dancing with Archie and being his partner. And um, he recently passed away uh, at the end of last year. And so that was a really special time for Archie to have with his grandfather. And uh, we honored him this year in our flash mob. And so that's just one example of ways that we can um, see those bonding relationships and that social emotional connecting taking place uh, within our classes. And then the other thing is that we wanted to give them um, a true visibility in our city. And so a lot of our performances take place either outside or in areas where they're able to be seen. Um, because we, like Mike was saying, we want to change the, pers the perspective and the um, perception of people with disabilities in our communities. We want everybody to notice and see how they are fully capable and able to be artists and performers and creators just as much as anybody else is. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about that in terms of artists here, which is coming up this weekend, and you'll kind of get an idea about that. But before I go on to how our programs are funded, um, we wanted to show you how we can empower um, the individual with disabilities to create and to also have a sense of accomplishment and um, take ownership of their bodies. So we're going to give you another opportunity to take ownership of your bodies and your creativity and this particular exercise that we're going to do with you guys is something that we have done with the YMCA Recess program that is performing at Artist Year on Sunday. And so they've gone through the same thing. So it's the exact same exercise that we did with them. Um, so you'll kind of get an idea about how you can take ownership um, of your bodies and uh, really feel empowered. So their performance on Sunday is about the seasons. It's a four seasons dance. Um, and so we've asked them to take movements from winter, spring, summer, and fall, and put them into their bodies and create their own uh, movements for those seasons. So we're going to ask you guys to do the same thing. So we're going to split up into groups by table. Yeah, so you're going to be in a larger group. Um, so we'll have, you know, you guys right here. I'm going to assign you guys summer. That's going to be your season. Let's have the four of y'all be winter. Um, this third table back here, you guys are going to be fall. And then the back table, and maybe like half of you guys can be spring, and the other half can be summer. Got it? Okay, who's summer? Where's your name? <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, who's, uh, who's spring? There we go. Yeah? Okay, and then uh, winter? And fall. So, we are going, for example, um, if my season is winter, I'm going to make this movement. Which one do you think that would be? Snow angel. Snow angel, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I might make this movement, which could be what was it? Snowflakes. Snowflakes, yeah. So you have to pick four different movements for your season. Four. Okay, as a group. Pick four movements for your season. I got this year. And figure out <laughs> figure out how many times you're gonna do them and what order you're going to do them in. Got make sense? Yeah, and then we're going to put on some music, and you're going to show everybody your four movements <laughs> and how many times you're doing them and then the, the order of them. Yeah. So connect with your group. You don't have to get up. You can stay on your table. But we're going to give you guys about four. I moved it over there. Get to our group. We're going to get a bunch of Yeah. 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 Yeah.
which means that you're communicating with your bodies and not your voices. So I don't want you guys to tell us your words while you're doing your movements. I want you to only do your movements without talking through them. And then, as a group, we can say, oh, that was, you know, breaking the leaves, or that was this, that was that. And so we can kind of interpret what they came up with as a group. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Turn that camera. <laughs>
all your self answers. That kind of showed you an example of that. And our students with disabilities, you will see them doing some of those movements in our artist group performance on Sunday. So I'm going to be quick because we're running out of time. But um, we are funded by a lot of different venues. Um, the Barbara Stone Foundation does most of our funding for our adaptive program. They provide scholarships or um, allow us to go free of charge into schools by providing and funding the entire projects that we do. So we're really grateful for that. A lot of, some of it comes from student tuition, but a lot of it's based off of scholarships. And then um, we're also looking for future uh, grants and funders to kind of help us with additional projects as we continue. So be on the lookout for those and tell us if they are around. Um, our current and future programming, right now we have Connect, which is our um, class with disabilities on Saturday mornings. It's a year-long program. They just had their performance last week and it was wonderful. Uh, we have our Adaptive Christmas Flash Mob, which this year we were able to perform downtown um, as the opening act of the Christmas Parade. If you haven't seen it, it's a really wonderful um, thing to watch, and we'd love for you to be a part of it this year. Even if you don't have somebody to um, who has a disability that you want to do it with, you can still be a part of it. And then we do uh, special education residencies. We go into eight different high schools throughout the year, and um, this year we're going to be adding a middle school residency. So we're working with them for uh, four to five week long periods and then they all come together at the end for a great big performance and showcase what they've learned. It's usually connected with an academic subject um, or some sort of classroom topic that we connect movement with. So they get a lot of um, arts education through that process. We do day service classes, um, day service, sorry, day service classes. And um, that would include like Thrive that we've worked with. This year we're going to we have funding to go into uh, West Greenville Active Day, which is um, a lot of seniors and a variety of disabilities. Um, and then we've done things like with Shape of Behavior and a lot of play date workshops as well um, with the museum or even some with CD, CDS and their um, Head Start, things of that nature. We love working with them. Um, and then special projects like our artist group projects where we're working with the recess program at YMCA. Um, our future programming that we will be doing uh, will be at Hope Academy this year, thanks to the Barbara Stone Foundation and their funding. Uh, we're going to be doing some early um, years and preschool based classes with them. And then um, we will be having a teacher training which is going to help us to engage um, more than just Allison and I and our other adaptive teacher, Paige, who works for ABLE. Um, without just doing the three of us, we need more teachers and more people in the upstate to know how to modify movements and work with people with disabilities. So is that why you had us do all this? You're like doing like, is it like a tryout or something? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, we're surveying the land. <laughs> yeah. okay. all right. So this training will kind of help us um, take all of that, all the content um, all the advocacy and the awareness of working with disabilities, as well as um, in, in implementing it into the classroom. And so these teacher trainings will happen, and uh, we'll pull from different people from around the state to be a part of them, um, and to teach and educate those teachers on how to work with people with disabilities. And it'll go hand in hand with our Connect class, so they get to work in the classroom as well as in a lecture type atmosphere. So we're really excited about that. And then this year we're also going to have an inclusive thriller flash mob um, that's going to incorporate all people, and it's not just adaptive, but we want to incorporate adaptive students in that. So you all came down to be a part of that, everybody. So I'm moving a little quickly because we don't have a whole lot of time, but you can kind of see the, the growth and the progression of students that we've worked with over the past three years. We started with 86 students throughout the year, and then we have reached now 246. Uh, and that's because our programs have grown and we have added new programs every year with the help of the Barbara Stone Foundation. We're going to um, skip our video. Yes. You guys can, we can always send it to you and look at it. That's one of our special education ones. Um, so our hope, this is like Kelsey and Allison's heart right here. Um, Hannah did a very good job of like putting her heart out there. I like really admired that. I was like, oh man, we need to have that much of a personal story as well. But we really just want to change the perception of dance in general in Greenville, and that our adaptive branch is one aspect of that. And it's an aspect we are both personally very passionate about. And we just kind of want to erase that preconceived notion that dance is reserved for a very specific body type, a very specific like brain capacity, music, listening, ability to know where all parts of your body are, it is 
it's definitely not that. It is for all people and that it is for enjoyment um, and really for those social and emotional connections. We're not trying to create professional dancers, we just want people to experience how their body can create and how their body can move. And then, how can you get involved? Slash the people that you work with and all the people that you know get involved. Come participate with us. Yes, like we just said, the uh, Thriller Flash Mob will be around October time, you know, Halloween time. If that doesn't intrigue you, but you know it could intrigue someone else, you know, just pass our information right along to them. Um, or if you work specifically with children or adults with disabilities and you know that this is something they would love to do, please encourage them to reach out to us or just connect us. Um, every, um, you can donate or if you know people that can donate, you know, we're always looking for those wonderful donations and sponsorships that go directly into our scholarship program that fund any individual being able to experience dance and take classes. And then, volunteering. We do need volunteers. Specifically this weekend, Kelsey will talk about it, um, but also in our performances and in our classrooms. Um, just if you want to be a one-on-one -on -one with someone, we always have a need for that. So this weekend, our YMCA recess teachers are going to be performing at 3 o'clock um, on Sunday for Mother's Day special. There are flyers in the back if you'd like to grab one. It's behind the Peace Center on the amphitheater stage outside. Mm -hmm. It will be right in front of the stage um, for just 10 minutes, our dances, and they're really excited about it. They have full costumes, mm -hmm. um, which we've never really done full costumes for some of our adaptive students, and so this is a really big deal for them to get to show what they've learned and perform. You know, there's going to be about 40,000 people at Artist Group this weekend, so it's a really big opportunity mm -hmm. to be exposed in our community. Um, and then, Volunteering. If you guys have um, any chance, as an organization, we've been chosen out of 12 different nonprofits in um, in Greenville to receive a portion of the proceeds from the festival. So every um, hour that we have with people volunteering under us, a part of that goes back to us to put back into our programs, put back into our adaptive um, sponsors and scholarships that we have. So. Um, there's a way to sign up online under artistfear.org and going down to the bottom to volunteer. There's only about 20 shifts open, but you can pour beer, you can mm -hmm. um, sell wristbands, there's lots of fun things to do and ways to get involved in our city um, and grabbing somebody with a disability and doing it with them. We have a few people with disabilities that are volunteering um, and it's going to be a really great opportunity for them to just be involved in our city and to be seen. So we'd love for y'all to be able to do that. And um, our website, of course, has more information as well. And our idea is collaborative.org. But thank you guys for your time. Thank you for listening. Um, and we really appreciate um, the way that y'all have participated with us today. Yes. And um, we hope that either we can partner with your organization or um, we hope that you will be able to work with us at some point in the future. Thank you guys.